By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a nice final for you from the X Point Old School Monthly. I believe this is final number seven and the final is going to be between Wouter and Jorgo and Wouter is playing a deck that he's called Underworld Pink. It's got red, it's got white, it's got a little bit of black and he's playing against Jorgo and Jorgo's got a deck that I've called Urnum Smash because it just there's so many creatures in here. I really like this deck to be honest. Um, so we've got these two decks who are going face to face. Now before we start with the action I would just like to point out that as always, if you want to go straight to the game show, you can check the timestamps below and there you will find a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Also, if you want to know more about the X Points rule set, you can find more information there and a link to their Facebook group. Because the cool thing is that X Points is a free initiative on Facebook. It's an old school group and they play monthly tournaments. So every month you can join and if you want to and they play online and it's Frutillaria, it's really like low key. So yeah, if you think this is a format for me, you can just step in and just to give a real kind of a real short um, explanation of, the, of what the format is, you basically have 10 points to spend, hence the X, right? The Roman numeral for 10. You've got 10 points to spend on a specific set of cards. And here in the overview, you can see the cards. For example, a Mox is two points and you know Ancestral Recall is five points. So you can only spend a total of 10 points. So you have to make choices while brewing your deck. And the idea of this is that you get more variety and that you get different decks and different cards who will have their moment in the spotlight. Now, if that's really the case, I leave that up to you. All I can say is that it seems to be a fun format. The matches that I've done so far for X points have really been a lot of fun. I know that Louis, the organizer, is really on top of everything. So, uh, so that's all you know. Great to see. So, uh, let me know what you think about X points as a format or a point system as a format in general. Would love to hear from you. Okay, and um, that's all I wanted to say here in the intro. So now we're gonna dive into the deck decks, and I'm actually gonna start with the deck of Wouter. So let's take a look at his deck, Underworld Pink. And here we see the deck of Wouter, Underworld Pink. And I have to say, Wouter, I'm a little bit surprised about the name. So when I heard Underworld Pink, I thought this is gonna have a lot of Underworld Dreams in here, and but that's not the case. I guess the name Underworld comes from the fact that you're playing with two black cards. You're playing with Set Straw, of course, which becomes 3-3 three, three when you've got Swamp. So there's kind of that Underworld connection there. So I like it. You play with Anime Dead, getting a creature back from the Underworld. Yeah, Underworld is of course black, so okay, I get it, I get it. But I was thinking about Underworld Dreams, and I have to say Underworld Dreams would be probably really problematic in this deck because you don't have a control deck, although it can work in aggro, but the most important reason not to play Underworld Dreams in this deck is it's three black to cast, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's just not gonna work in this brew. Anyway, looking at the deck, you can really say it's your traditional pink weenie build, right? We see a lot of cheap creatures that you can cast, uh, you know, Savannah Lines, Granite Gargoyle, the good thing about Gargoyle, by the way, I, I find I feel it's a little bit underestimated. It's only one red and two. So if you play multiple colors, it's really a great way to quickly have a 2-2 flyer on the board with an upside because you can pump the toughness. And that can be really relevant. You know, I've played against it with a side blast in hand and he just had enough red to keep it alive. It was super, super annoying. Um, so yeah, so that's what I want to share. And then of course we see the four set trolls and that kind of opens up to this whole th troll disco theme that's also part of this deck, right? We see two Nevenerals discs. We all know this combo by now, right? You pop the disc, you regenerate the trolls, so you keep the trolls, your opponent loses all their creatures, and then you start attacking with the trolls, right? And the trolls are 3-3 because you probably have swamps in the game. So that, that's a really solid strategy. A nice card that goes hand in hand with that strategy is a card we also see in this deck, Rook Egg. Now the interesting thing here is that Wouter has decided to only play with a single Rook Egg, which I think is kind of cool because in that way the Rook Egg is a surprise instead of like going full on the Rook Egg and this deck Rook Egg is just a little extra. And we see that more and more and more, and more where, you know, players want to have that flexibility. You also see it in this deck with there's just one anime deck, not multiple. So not the whole deck is built around these cards, but these cards are just really complementary to, you know, the plan of Wouter anyway. Maybe a nice thing to say if you don't know this, it's really cool. The synergy between Chain Lightning and Rook X. So Chain Lightning is a sorcery you want to cast from Legends. Three damage to any target, right? So you target your own Rook X. The cool thing is with Chain Lightning, you can then pay two red because you're the target and then you can uh, deal three damage again, but this time 
to your opponent, to a creature for your opponent, or even better, if you've got a second Rook Egg, you can kill your other Rook Egg with your Chain Lightning. Now, in this case, there's only one Rook Egg, but I just wanted to point that out, that Chain Lightning and Rook Egg, they really go hand in hand. It's really nice synergy. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Chain Lightning because it's sorcery speed, and I just love the fact that with Lightning Bolt, it's instant speed, one red, it's simple, you know what it does. Uh, so, uh, you know, especially as, as a, you know, playing with Chain Lightnings and, and Lightning Bolts, I just had these really awkward moments where I wanted to use my Chain Lightning, for example, in combat or when I was on defense, and I couldn't do it because it's a sorcery. And I was like, ah, man, oh no, it's not a Lightning Bolt. It's kind of like the B version of Lightning Bolt. But I do understand why you would play it, especially in this deck where you're kind of going aggro and having that red to kind of finish your opponent, right? Because you're going to hopefully start out of the gates, deal a lot of damage with your creatures, and then if your opponent is low enough, you can finish it off with your direct damage. So four bolts, three chains, and a fireball. We see that in um, in this deck. And of course, white, why is white so powerful? Because it has the best answers to creatures, to enchantments, to artifacts, and all that is packed into two cards that are actually very affordable, and that sorts to plow Sears and disenchant, so it's quite easy to get these cards. I would actually go as far to say as if you don't own any blue power and you, you know you want to get um, competitive in a budget way, then you know white is really a great color to start because of disenchant, because of sorts, and because of balance. Balance is not in this deck, by the way, but I guess he's got Neverneurl's discs kind of as a balance, right? Anyway, this is the deck of Wouter. Um, now we're going to look at the deck of his opponent, Urnum Smash. Let's take a look at the deck of Yorgo. And here we see the deck of um, Yorgo, Urnum Smash. I've called it Urnum Smash because, like I said in the intro, I like this deck because it's like there are a lot of creatures and creatures, like angry creatures, smash, smash stuff. Like when I see Darylor, which I think is absolutely cool, right? When I see a Darylor and a Juggernaut next to each other, I'm happy. I'm just gonna be. I'm. I'm. I'm happy. I'm happy. I see. I see Yorko uh, play with a lot of decks that are very strong decks, but are for me personally not so interesting. But I like. I like this. You know, just a lot of creatures and constant pressure, and also the fact that um, Yorko has decided not to go for red in this one. It's so tempting when you play aggro to choose to add red as a splash. So you have chain uh, lightning, you have that lightning bolts, especially the bolts, I guess. You've got the, you know, fireball or disintegrate, which are just great ways to finish, but it's also kind of, eh, you know, we, we it's, it's just, I, I personally find it more interesting when you try to accomplish it purely on creature power. It's probably better when you add the red. I'm saying probably because it so depends on your play style, who you are, you know, all those factors. They, 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 you need to take that into account. But what I'm liking about Yorgos Brew is he's saying, okay, turn one Savannah Line, turn two Argovian Pixies, turn three, hopefully I've ramped up somehow and I can cast an Urnum Jin or Darylor or Juggernaut, turn four Sarah Angel, you know. And then he's got, of course, that Urnum Geddon package here where he's got three Armageddons. He's going to put the Armageddons on the board and he's going to wipe out the lands. That, that kind of part is well known you know i what's that movie again when they say it is known you know that's kind of the part of the deck where i'm like yeah yeah i understand like it's great like we see armageddon more and more it's super powerful i should probably start making some armageddon decks i have had some armageddon decks in the past um anyway but yeah it's it's a strong card one white and three right destroys all the lands goes really well with like crumbles and disenchants in this case uh, we see Disenchants in the deck of Yorgo. So the reason why they go so well is the Disenchants take care of the artifact mana rocks like Thower Stone, like Sol Ring, maybe a Mox or two. You can destroy them with your Disenchants and then you can destroy the lands with Armageddon. What I'm actually liking about this matchup is we have a situation where you've got Nevenerl's Disc, which blows everything up except the lands, but then you've got Armageddon, blows up all the lands. So potentially you could have a situation where both boards are completely empty in the middle of the game. And like this complete Armageddon, I guess, this Wrath of God Armageddon scenario. And um, I'm kind of looking forward to that, actually. What I'm also liking about both of these decks is both decks are not playing with Mind Twist. And I guess that's really an example of this 10-point system because Mind Twist is a very expensive card to play in this format because it costs you five points and you can only spend 10. So five points means 
half of your points are gone. So I think that's really showing that in that sense, the format is working. You also don't see players, both of these players playing with the Library of Alexandria. So, you know, that's, that that's kind of interesting, you know that that's not something that um, that you would see often in in other formats. Like they're playing according to the Atlantic rules, for example. In Atlantic, you would definitely see these decks um, being being playing with mind twists. I mean, no doubt, you know. Um, anyway, so lo looking at this base, he's playing with a ton, a ton, a ton of creatures, and basically, um, their lore functions as an Urnum Jin. Juggernaut functions as an Urnum Jin. They have four casting cost they have well their lore is four power juggernaut's even better it's got five power i think in this matchup because um Wouter is playing with bolts and chains he's just gonna you know have a have a laugh every time he sees a juggernaut on the board on the other on the other hand you know if your hook in time is juggernaut's right it's five damage if it if it manages to push through and that is a lot of damage that is a serious clock right um, for the people that maybe don't know what Daryl Lore does, it's, it's one black and three for a four four, and it has one downside, and that is that all your other black spells cost one black more to cast. But in the case of Yorko, that really doesn't matter because he's just using three Daryl Lores. Those are his only black cards, and he's got two Birds of Paradise. Uh, he's got City of Brasses. He's got dual lands that can produce black mana. So I think mana wise, he's actually kind of you know safe with this. So. Yeah, it makes sense. So this is the deck of Yorgo. We've already looked at the the deck of Wouter. So now let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. Yorgo sitting at the top. Wouter sitting at the bottom. They're taking a beer. Cheers, Wouter. And there we see a Mox Pearl. And I believe that's a Savannah. And does he have a turn one play? There's a Lanower Elves. So that's pretty good. So next turn, he possibly can have four mana. He can start casting Juggernaut, Urnum, Darylor if he's got a black source. So this could be painful for Wouter. The question is, is Wouter going to bolt the Lanawer? Well, he's not doing it or he doesn't have it in hand. Both is an option. Just an attack for one here from Yorko. I'm a little bit surprised. I was expecting him to play out a big four drop here. Instead, another Lanawer Elf. And Argovian Pixies 2-1 protection from artifacts. So really great against like those annoying Mishra's Factories. Here talking about it and <laughs> he's putting it on the board. Mishra's Factory here by Wouter Janssen. Looking at hand, passing turn. Really nice. He keeps the dice on his hand, by the way, so his opponent can see the amount of cards. I think it's really a nice idea. There's an Armageddon. Ooh, I'm expecting to see a bolt now. Are we going to see a bolt? If he has one, of course. Ooh, no, we're going to see a Swords. Swords on the Pixies, I think that's a good decision. That's going to save him two damage a pop. So he's going to take a damage. Going to go to 18. There is a new land drop by Yorgo. And this was really a good move for Yorgo. He's really setting Wouter back here. And for Wouter, I mean, he has to hope for like a Savannah line maybe to block. Or hopefully he's got a Swords in hand. Because I'm really expecting like some kind of big drop to, to appear from Yorgo. But it looks like it's not happening and uh, it seems that Jorgo here is on 22, by the way. And there's a Chain Lightning on one of the Lanawer Elves. Wouter taking another damage. Going to go down to 15. We see the scores on the left side, by the way. And as you can see, this is played in Tolaria. It's really a nice uh, way to play your old school magic games, by the way. If you haven't heard of it yet, I'll add a link in the description below. And you can find Tolaria for yourself and you can check it out. Uh, there's an attack for three. That's Savannah Line by Jorgo. That's going to make a dent in Wouter's life totals already on 11. I mean, he doesn't play Earthquake main, but Earthquake of 1 would just be so sweet right now for Wouter. And I guess, like, in a way, Yorgo is, is drawing really good, but in another way he's not, because he's not able to find, like, his 4 drops. I mean, Wouter would have been dead if, like, there would have been, like, a Juggernaut or anything of that kind of magnitude on the board. Didn't happen for Yorgo, though, so he's still kind of stuck just dealing 2 damage, 3 damage... But it's still looking good for him. Bouter kind of in the tank here, really thinking, what can I do? Taking a damage, going to 10, playing an anime dead. Ah, oh, interesting. Now remember, anime dead takes away a point of power. So that Lanor Elf is actually an 0 01, a 0 01 creature, which is really bad. It means he can only jump. So it's really just extending his life here with maybe one turn max. There's a juggernaut now hitting the board. Bouter needs to get rid of the juggernaut. He's on nine. 
I mean, he's going to take eight next turn, so I guess then he at least has one more turn, but he needs to get rid of the Juggernaut. Perhaps he can play a Setch Troll now. Setch Troll will be 3-3 three, three because of the Batlands, because that also counts as a Swamp, so that could be an option to block the Juggernaut with. He's taking another damage. I mean, that City of Brass, that's going to count. And this is interesting. So Vauter now playing the Granite Gargoyle, and what is he going to block? That's going to be the big question here. Ooh, interesting choice. I'm not sure if I would have done this. He's going to go up to 10. There we see the attack. So it's going to go down to 2. Interesting choice by Yorho. On the other hand, you know, if he wouldn't have done it, perhaps the Gargoyle would have blocked the lines. That would have been interesting to kind of see what Vauter would have done. Okay, he's picking up the cards. Doesn't matter anymore. Yorho is winning a game number one, and both these players are going to dig in their sideboards, and we'll catch up back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Yorho. That means Wouter is probably going to be on the play here. Yes, he is. Starting with Badlands, passing turn. So no Savannah Lines for him, turn one. Are we going to see a Savannah Lines for Yorho? Yes, we are. And that Mox Emeralds, really good start for Yorho. Pressure from the get-go. And I guess Wouter doesn't have a bolt or else he would have bolted it on end step. Playing a Mishra's Factory here. And I wonder if that kind of means that he doesn't have a white source in hand. That he plays at Mishra's Factory now. Although, on the other hand, he can think, okay, I want to play it now. The next turn I can pump it to a 3-3 and possibly kill the lines in the block. That could be an option as well. I always find it quite difficult to play with Mishra's Factory when your opponent has access to white because he's got Disenchant and he's got Swords. And there we see a Terror. I believe this is a card coming in from the sideboard. Terror from Wouter, which is really nice. A nice, clean way to get rid of the Savannah line. We also see a Chaos Orb by Yorho, and he's not flipping on one of the lands. That is quite interesting. Perhaps he's got Armageddon in hand, because next turn he's got four mana. And because of that Mox, he can cast Armageddon and keep the, keep one uh, one mana because of that Mox Emerald. There we see uh, basic planes by Wouter. Is he gonna attack? He is gonna attack. Of course he sees that Yorho doesn't have white open. Only has that Mox Emerald. And the question is, is Yorho gonna flip? He is pointing at his Chaos Orb. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. He decides to take the damage. He's going to go down to 18. And a pass turn. And now are we going to see a possible Armageddon? There's a Bayou. Yes, Armageddon. That means all the lands are gone for Wouter. And I guess the only silver lining here for Wouter is that after game one, he kind of knows to expect the Armageddon. And perhaps he's going to play differently. Because remember, his deck doesn't need a lot of mana. So he could decide to kind of put, keep Lance in hand. Also, both players are not playing with Mind Twist. So you don't have to worry about that. And both players are not playing with Balance. Balance is another really cool card to use to kind of as a, as a Mind Twist kind of way. But um, yeah, I, I believe both players are not playing with Balance or Mind Twist. So it's really easy to just keep a full grip of cards in this matchup. Here we see Wouter playing another land. I believe it's a Savannah and a pass turn. And we see that Lanor Elf being played by Yorho. It looks like Wouter is not really bothered by the Armageddon. Um, he's really recovered quite quickly. Already three lands in play. And are we going to see a Chain or a Bolt or on the Lanor? I mean, it could make a difference. Remember, Yorho also plays with Sarah Angels. And he's got five. But I guess the sweet spot for Yorho is really having four mana. Ooh, there we see an end of turn Swords to Plowshares by Yorho, an attack with the Lanawer. He's only got one card in hand, and that seems to be the Birds of Paradise. Let's see, Wouter playing another land. So really finding the lands he needs. And tapping out, what's he going to do? Oh, Fireball! A classic two-for-one, and here we can see why Fireball can be superior to Disintegrate in specific situations. Especially against those mana dorks that you see so much in old school magic. But Wouter here just passing turn. Yorho actually doing kind of the same. Tapping five. Okay, there's a Sarah. And yeah, exactly. There we see the flip. Not surprised here. And I guess Wouter saw this coming. So maybe he's got another big creature in hand. Perhaps a second angel. So he's going to untap one card in hand for Yorho. Or two cards, by the way, I believe. Or it's just one. I'm not quite sure. Anyway. There, ooh, turn, answer by Yorho. Yeah, I believe two cards in hand. Now he's got two again. And there's a Derelore. Wow, and I guess if you're Wouter, you're kind of bumped here uh, for that second terror. Just so many answers in both of these decks. I guess that's what you need in today's old school magic scene, that you just need, and you need 
red removal, white removal, black removal. You just need all types of removal to keep up with the creature threats. And vow to here tapping two, and there is a chaos orb. And passing turn here. There's an untap. We see that one Darylor is gonna attack. Is he gonna flip? Oh no, he's got something better. Or well better. He's got another way to deal with it. Swords to plowshares. That does mean four more life for Yorho. Climbing up to 22 here. Both players above the 20 mark, by the way, which is kind of interesting because these are really aggressive decks, both of them. And Wouter's gonna go to 23. Yorho is now stuck on 22 still. And there's an Argovian Pixies. So another threat on the board here. Let's see what Wouter can do. I believe he's got four cards in hand. There's a Chain Lightning on the Pixies. And a pass turn here. There he goes. And a pass. So we're kind of in a top decking mode here for both players. I guess maybe Wouter's hand is full of removal. Let's see what Yorho is going to do here. Maybe, you know, it could be that Wouter also has like Disenchant in hand, Swords in hand. Maybe a Bolt, maybe some lands. Who knows? There's a Strip Mine. Not gonna do much at the moment. It's not really a good target for Yorho, and so he just passes. Wouter just passes. There we see a creature. I'm expecting Wouter just to have an answer here. Okay, there we see a Bolt and Step. And he's back to five cards again, I believe. And pass turn. So Wouter really trying to find creatures. Yorho basically doing the same. Okay, there's a Mishra's Factory. That's a creature. That's some pressure. I wonder if Yorho's gonna strip it, if Wouter's gonna attack next turn with it. First, see what Yorho is going to do. Interesting that he taps a strip mine here. Goes for five. Okay, there we see a Sarah Angel hitting the board. Does Wouter have an answer? Like, Sarah is kind of difficult to deal with for Wouter with, like, his chains or bolts. But when you've got a sword, <laughs> it's not a problem. And, of course, he still has that Chaos Orb on the board. That must really bother, uh, bother Yorho, you know? He's like, I just want you to use your Chaos Orb so that that's just out of the way. And attack for two here. So, Yorho's going to go to 24. Both players still on 20 plus life. And there is a Satch Troll. And he's got that Badlands there open so he can still regenerate. I'm sorry, the um, not the Badlands, but the uh, the White Black Land that for some reason I forgot the name of. Oh, there we see Urnum Jin. Interesting here. And the question now is, if you're Wouter, are you going to use your Orb and Step? No, I think that's a good decision. You want to keep that mana open to possibly regenerate. And what is he going to do? Scrubland. Okay, that's that's the dual land I meant. Scrubland. Let's see. There's a flip. And there's a disenchant by Yorho. That is really important here, this disenchant. If Wouter doesn't have any other way to deal with the Urnum, I mean, he can still block it on the Sedge because it has regenerate. But at least it doesn't give Wouter the upper hand. If the flip would have worked, he could have attacked afterwards with and the 3-3 three, three Satch and the 2-2 two, two Mishra's dealing possibly 5 damage. Perhaps Yorho then would have stripped the factory. But, um... Ooh, there's a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what he's gonna look up. Interesting here. Demonic Tutor. Could even go for an animate on one of the Sarah Angels. Gonna go through his cards. Maybe he just wants removal... For the Urnum, you know, get rid of the Urnum, attack for five. That seems to be like a decent deal. Let's see what he can do here. And he's passing turn, so I guess he didn't look up the... Yeah, there we see a strip on the Mishra's Factory, so I guess he didn't look up any removal. There's the attack for four. Maybe he looked up a Nevenerals disc, of course. Gonna play Nevenerals. That could be... Ooh, another Urnum. And this is risky for Yorho playing that other Urnum out. I mean, isn't he worried about the disc? Then again, he hasn't seen the disc yet, so maybe he thinks this deck doesn't have discs. There's another Satch Troll. Is Wouter just really waiting and waiting and waiting? Wow. There's a Swords on one of the Trolls, which, of course, is a great answer because you cannot regenerate it. 
because it's removed from the game. We do see some more life here for Wouter. And his game number two is a real nail biter, and it's far from over. Ooh, there we see a swords on the Urnum and an attack. Or I should say a block and a sword, sorry. After the attack of Jorgo. So that means Jorgo is going to go up to 28. What is he going to do? Does he have that Nevernal's Disc? I guess he does not playing a Preacher. That's maybe even better. He can steal the Urnum next turn. Oh, this is bad news for Jorgo. This is bad news. There's a Savannah Lion. Okay, at least he can give the Lion. If Wouter cannot just kill the Lion, he can get the Urnum. This is going to be interesting. Remember, Urnum has to give Forest Walk to one of the creatures. There we see the Preacher activation. So Preacher gets Forest Walk. That makes sense. There we see a Flyer on the board. So he's really committing to the board right now. With that Granite Gargoyle, Yorho is just passing turn here. And I would just attack with the Savannah Lions and with the Flyer. That's exactly what he does. He's attacking here. Oh, he's not attacking with the Savannah Lion. Interesting. I would have attacked because when you attack and he blocks with the Urnum, next turn he can untap the Preacher and he can still steal the Urnum. So for Yorho, it's really difficult to kind of deal with that Savannah Lion. There we see another Sedge. Again, he's attacking. So more damage for Yorho here. It's going to go down to 20. Perhaps he is attacking with the Savannah Lion, by the way. Yeah, he is attacking. So he's kind of untapping the Preacher as a Savannah Lion. Okay, so he is attacking. That makes perfect sense. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. I thought maybe he's attacking with the Preacher because of Forest Walk, but if you untap the Preacher, you lose control of the Savannah Lion. So he's just attacking with the Savannah Lions. And there he goes. Interesting. Attacking with the Sedge Troll and with the Granite Gargoyle. They're regenerating the Sedge Troll. Does that mean that he's got a bolt in hand to possibly bolt away the Darylor? Because I believe the block was on the Darylor. We do see um, Jorge now slowly going down on life. He's now on 18. Yeah, there we see the Chain Lightning. Oh, he was being blocked by the Urnum. Interesting. Interesting choice by Jorgo here to block on the Urnum. Perhaps because of that Preacher that's in play. Let's see. Wouter attacking with the Lion. Okay, so he's not putting a separate card in it. So he's attacking with the Savannah Lion, a Sedge Troll, and the 2-2 Flyer. I wonder what Jorgo's going to do. Looks like he's blocking the Sedge. Sedge gets regenerated. That means four more damage for Jorgo. Going down to 14. There we see a Rook Egg. That single Rook Egg that's in Jorgo's deck. Or sorry, in Wouter's deck. There we see a Badlands. And a Pass Turn. And oh, that's it. Jorgo's saying you've got it. Wow, I kind of felt like Jorge could have played some more magic. I mean, it's looking really bad for him, but still, you never know. Then again, I guess there's no Wrath of God in Jorge's deck. There's no Nevernor's Disc. There's no Balance. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that he's like, okay, it's not going to work out, you know. But still, I think I would have played a few more rounds. Then again, the Preacher also... It was rough, Jorgo. It was. I, 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 I get you. The cool thing is that we're now going to go to a game number three. So who's going to win the X points monthly? Is it going to be Jorgo at the top of your screen or Wouter at the bottom? Let's find out in game number three. And here we go. Game number three. The winner of this game will be the winner of tournament number seven, monthly number seven of the X points league. Now remember, if you like what you see and if you want to join in on the X-Points action, you can. It's quite easy. Just join their Facebook group, build yourself a deck, and uh, sign up for the monthly. Jorgo on the play here. I guess that makes him a slight favorite, starting with a Savannah line again. Oh, Wouter also starting, finally finding that turn one Savannah line for him. There's an attack with the Savannah by Jorgo. And are we going to see a block by Wouter here? Is he going to trade the Lions for the Lions? He's actually going to take the damage. And then we see an Argovian Pixies in the second main of Jorgo in a pass turn. Interesting situation here. Next turn, of course, Wouter can pump his Mishra's Factory and block the line and kill it. Attack here. And also Jorgo is taking the damage. Going to go to 18. There we see a Badlands. Are we going to see a Sedge Troll? A 3-3 creature would be really good for Wouter right now. 
An ancestral, just such a good creature, you know. For three mana, you have a potential 3-3 three, three with regeneration. That's just amazing for old school. Attacking with the 2-1, and there is a lightning bolt on the Argovian Pixies. Argovian Pixies is a goner. There we see a Birds of Paradise. Yorho missing a land drop here. And pass turn there. Bouter playing a basic planes. Attacking with the 2-1. It's going to trade for the Lion. And playing... Ooh, an often troll. Interesting. And there's a little window for Yorho to kill this creature now. We see a Chaos Orb. And he's going to flip. And is he going to flip on the often troll? He is flipping on the often troll. The often troll, of course, uh, is a 2-2 creature for one red. You can regenerate it. And I believe this comes in from the sideboard of Wouter. And there we see a Sarah Angel... That is pretty big, but a quick response here with a Swords to Plowshares and an Argovian Pixies being cast by Yorho. So pressure on the board here. Let's see what he's going to do. Does he have another Sarah Angel in hand? Looking at his hand right now. Tapping, tapping, five. Yep, another Sarah Angel. So Yorho is really kind of praying to the magic gods that Yorho doesn't have an answer. There's your answer. <laughs> the terror. Oh, man. I think both players, after playing the, the games, they kind of realize, okay, we're both pretty creature heavy. So we just got to play with a lot of creature removal. And that's exactly what we're seeing in game number three and what we saw in game number two as well. So after sideboard, I guess one of the biggest changes is even more removal. You know, both players started boarding in their terrace, for example. Bouter here playing his Granite Gargoyle 2-2 Flyer. Having no red mana open to pump it, though. Only having access to one red source. And attacking with the Argovian, I think he's going to take the damage exactly. He doesn't want to trade his 2-2 Flyer for the Argovian Pixies. There we see an untap by Bouter. So Bouter's probably, if it's possible, going to keep one red open to pump that Granite Gargoyle. So that Badlands is probably going to stay untapped. Unless he's got a really good option here, maybe casting a Set Troll, for example. Both players are on 18 here. Yorho having two Argovian Pixies, a Savannah Lines, and a Birds of Paradise on the board. Wouter having just a Lonely Granite Gargoyle. Of course, he also has that Mistress Factory on the board that he can animate to be a 2-2. Two, -two. two cards in hand for Yorho. There's the attack. And I think Wouter now has two cards in hand. Playing a Plateau. Ooh, a double chain. Taking care of the two Pixies. That is really good here for Yorho being, oh, sorry, for Wouter being able to deal with those two creatures. Because that means he's going to lose, uh, Yorho's going to lose the race. And here we see the Mishra's Factory really doing work, by the way, because Yorho doesn't want to attack or else the Savannah Lines are going to run into the Mishra's Factory. So we see another attack by Wouter. Yorho dropping to 12, which is quite low here. There we see another Gargoyle. So next turn he can deal 4 damage. Yorho needs to draw into answers. There's a Preacher. That is an answer. That's actually really good. He can use that Preacher to take control of one of the Gargoyles. And then at least block the Flyer. The downside, of course, for Yorho will be, although he's got Birds of Paradise, he can make a 1 red mana. And he can make it a 2-3. And that way he can block the other Gargoyle endlessly. Wouter really needs removal for that one Preacher. Attacking with both. Preacher still has Summoning sick Sickness. 4 damage. Yorho dropping to 8. And remember, Wouter also plays with Fireball. He can make a Fireball of 5 right now. So Wouter wants to go into combat. And then I'm expecting Yorho to kind of use yeah, his Preacher. So you want to use it before combat, before the creatures get tapped. There we see an Animate. And he's going to give him the Mishra's Factory. That's actually very smart. He's going to give him the Factory, kind of forcing Yorho to, if he wants to prevent damage, he has to chump. It looks like they're going to look something up, perhaps about the Mishra's Factory ruling. I believe, but I could be wrong, we're, we're about to find out. I believe Yorho is going to keep the Mishra's Factory as long as he keeps the Preacher tapped. He's actually going to untap the Preacher and Yorho says, this is it, there's nothing I can do. Showing his hand. Oh, he's just short on Lance. Short on Lance. And that is it. Wouter, congratulations, man. You have won the X-Points uh, tournament here. Tourney number seven. Well done. I think it's your first big tournament victory. So really thumbs up to you. And I also want to give a shout out to Louis, a.k.a. Luki, for organizing the X-Points tournaments. He's been doing this for the seventh 
time because I guess this is number seven, seven, seventh month in a row. So Luki, really, man, props to you. It's great that you're organizing this for all players who just want to play Magic and it's fantastic. Also, shout out to the makers of Tolaria, just this fantastic app that again, you can use it completely free. If you want, you can support them. They've got Patreon, you can donate. Um, it's just a great initiative. Talking about all that, if you like what I see and if you like the content that I make, you can of course also support Timmy Talks and you can do that in a few really, really simple ways. Number one, you can leave a like. It really hel helps. Just click on that thumbs up. Number two, you can leave a comment. And number three, if you're new to the channel, welcome to Timmy Talks. Um, you can subscribe, become a subscriber. All those actions are free and it helps me to grow the channel. Now there's one paid thing you can do and that also helps uh, me keep doing what I'm doing and that is becoming a patron via Patreon. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on the info card and that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can also already become a Patreon for one dollar a month. How cool is that? And the nice thing is We've got our own Discord. We also organize some tournaments for channel members and patrons. Um, I just do that to thank the people that kind of support me financially. And your name will be in the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at our fantastic wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go.
it kind of makes sense that he's like, okay, it's not going to work out, you know. But still, I think I would have played a few more rounds. Then again, the preacher also, it was rough, Jorgel. It was. I, 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 I get you. The cool thing is that we're now going to go to a game number three. So who's going to win the X points monthly? Is it going to be Jorgel at the top of your screen or Wouter at the bottom? Let's find out in game number three.